I'm Arya Schwartz, along with my co-hosts tonight, Pat Ralph and Rachel Galligan. Welcome to the WNBA Insider Show. Each week, different topics important to the W. Using X's and O's along with key and critical stats, we bring honest and critical analysis. It's playoff time. We're talking playoffs. Pat, Rachel, welcome. Hola. What's up, man? It's good to be back. Yeah, it's been it's been a little. We've had some some hiccups in uh, in our latest recording, so it's been a little bit since we had a show. But Pat, why don't you give the people because they've been thirsting for it? Why don't you give the people a little bit of a, a breakdown of what we're doing for the playoffs this year? Yeah, so I mean, as you mentioned, we've been a little uh, zero dark thirty a little bit, but we've all been kind of busy. It's just a tough time of the year. It's summer, and people are traveling, and it's sometimes tough to be all in the same time zone and. Uh, to find each other, but now, as you mentioned, it's playoff time. We're excited. It's it's already here. It feels like the season just started. It feel it really did just three months ago, and here we are now, getting ready to start this week. And here at WNBA Insider, we've got some great coverage coming your way uh, over the next month. We're really ramping it up. We're really going to be hitting you know kind of all the platforms and just coverage really well and stuff. You know, we're going to be doing more podcasts and stuff, whether it's you know, just recap of the games and previews of the games upcoming and just keeping you up to date on that front. If you're looking for more stuff on the audio side, if you just want to be able to read stuff, if you're not looking to listen, but you want to be able to read stuff, we're going to have stuff too. We're going to have plenty of stuff on these first round games that are coming up tomorrow night, stuff on the second round games. And then once the semifinals and finals get going, we want to be able to flood the site with stories and coverage and just be constantly just flooding the zone with good coverage Um, because we want to be out there. We want to be giving you guys, the fans, the best coverage out there so you guys know what's going on and can follow along because we're about to experience, I think, a really awesome and fun playoff run here in the next month. And uh, it's it's going to be a good time. And we just want to give you guys a good product and, you know, just so you guys can come to us and know that we're we're giving you guys the best coverage in the league. Oh, 100%. And and you know what? We're excited because this is a season – and we were talking about before we even started, this is a season where early on uh, we we chatted and we kind of floated the idea, Pat and Rachel, that the Lynx and Sparks might face off in a do-or-die round. And now we didn't necessarily, I'm not going to claim that we had the, the all-seeing future ball or whatever it's called, but we did predict that this is a very likely possibility. And now here we are. I mean, we're talking about, two teams that have been historically some of the greatest teams the league have, has ever seen and had some of the greatest uh, playoff series that this league has ever seen. And now they're facing off in the first round do or die round. Um, I, Rachel, give me your thoughts. I mean, I, I know it's hard to put in words, but but talk to it, me. Well, I mean, first off, I, 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 we, like, like you said, we kind of talked about it before. I can't believe that it's like tomorrow and well today for those of you who are listening and And I can't believe that it's like a do or die one game scenario. I mean, talk about like as intense as it possibly could get. Um, And I think, you know, you kind of get the sense, especially with the, you know, the news of Waylon retiring and and that this is kind of the end of an era. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of change. And that's kind of what this entire summer, this 2018 season has been about is kind of a lot of change, a lot of teams evolving and growing and the game is growing. And so kind of this historic um, matchup between the Lynx and the Sparks, which has been just so great for the game. But uh, you get the sense that, like, you know, the, the era is changing a little bit, um, especially the fact that these two dynasties and, uh, are meeting, really, the first round of the playoffs in a do-or-die situation. So, I mean, it, it's as intense intense as it gets. Um, it's as exciting as it gets. Um, and the fact that, like, we're talking about Sparks and the Lynx um, in a one-game series is, is, to me, it just blows my mind. It's it's crazy. I mean, Pat, we talked about this. What are what are your thoughts about it? Yeah. It's I'm just going to echo what Rachel said. I mean, it's crazy to think, you know, we all predicted at the beginning of the season that the Sparks and Lynx would meet for a third straight time in the playoffs. Except the fact that it's going to be in a first round playoff game. Uh winner goes moves on, loser goes home. Uh that's not what we expected. Uh, we expected these two teams to meet again in the finals. It'd be round three, part three, the 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 rubber match between after 2016 going to Los Angeles and 2017 going to Minnesota. We figured 2018 would be the 
the the um you know the deciding one and it'll be the the trilogy uh and said yeah we're getting a trilogy but it's going to be one game in los angeles winner goes on to the second round which will be on the road for them loser goes home uh and there's so much at stake and like rachel said i think fans and i think the media i think everybody knows tomorrow i think it's you're gonna i think espn 2s ratings are going to be really going to do really well not just because of the rivalry but because I think everyone knows that this rivalry, its current iteration, is going to change significantly. Not just from the Minnesota side, but I do believe from the Los Angeles side. I think that, yes, a lot of the faces will remain the same. A lot of the same characters we've gotten to know over the years of the plot and the storyline will be there when we, when we get back together in May and start the 2019 season. But a lot of the classic faces we know, like Lindsay Whalen, is not going to be there. There are already rumors about... Simone Augustus or Rebecca Brunson hanging it up after this year as well. Um, and we've said too with Minnesota, and we'll get more into details with this as we get into the game, is, you know, this is a team that has to, uh, you know, is going to have to change things around Maya Moore and Sylvia Fowles. And Los Angeles is going to have to change things around their trio of Candace Parker, Neko Gumake, and Chelsea Gray and stuff. And um, I, I think that this is, uh, I think everybody knows that this is, tomorrow night after it will never be the same after tomorrow night's game between these two teams it just it'll miss something special after that yeah and and you really don't want to miss this and i'm not plugging it for the league or espn but you don't want to miss this in my mind this is the epic battle of rocky balboa versus uh, apollo creed when in the third match they had their two big matches and the third match no one really knows who won that match to me this is kind of what's going on you've had these epic heavyweight battles And now you have this one do or die that's going to kind of get swept under the rug, you know, as the playoffs go on. And that's one of, there are very few negatives in my mind of having the one and done. To me, one of the things that is a negative is you have these epic battles and then it's just, it's done and you move on to the next round. Where in my mind, if you have at least like a a soccer style best of two or or like a best of three series, then it, it, it kind of expands it a little bit further and makes it a little bit more exciting for the fans as, as far as just like the storylines. Because for me, after this game, yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be crazy. But then one of these amazing teams is going to be home, you know, drinking Mai Tais yeah. on the beach. And and I I, I mean, I to me, I, I said this before, and I'll say this again. My hope is that because you have two of the top teams facing off in this, my hope is that this maybe puts the league in a spot where they go, maybe we will extend the second do or die round to a series, a short series. But I still think that would be the best thing to come of it. You still have the excitement of the do or die, but then you don't kill, uh, you know, the player's legs. And you you at least give, cause look, you can't have the three and four team in my mind battling in a do or die. What are your thoughts on that, Rachel? I would like to see it best of three. How do you guys feel about that? I'm for it, Pat. I would like it too. Um, it would obviously extend the postseason. I mean, the one game drama is pretty crazy. Right. I mean, yeah. I do think there is uh, something that should be appreciated is like one game for all the marbles. It's kind of like the NCAA tournament, you know? It's one game. You can throw out win and loss records. You can throw out, you know, what happened when they previously met. It's it's kind of when you really just look at it. It's like how if, you know, if a team matches up well against another team, doesn't matter where the game is they could they could win you know if it's one game and they play well so but like you guys said if you got it to a best of three then maybe there's you know that that could be good as well too i think um i wouldn't be opposed to that if it was a best well, of three either so i mean i think there are pros and cons to both I agree, sides and I, but I, yeah. I do think you know just well obviously this year with the condensed schedule but just the the nature of the WNBA season in general it makes it really difficult you know come playoff time to really extend it to kind of draw it out uh, that's why yeah. kind of that single game elimination, it does bring some intensity to it. I think it definitely helps with media coverage, especially on like, you know, ESPN, stuff like that. Um, so I'm with you. I, I do, I do see um, the positives and negatives to both, but you know, I, I would think that, you know, as you inv- advance past, past that first round, um, taking it to three, I'm a little partial too. Right. So I want to, well, we're just going to dive into this sparks links. Um, so far they've played four times. Sparks have won three of them. And I, I guess I'll ask the question on everyone's mind. Is this just going to be goodbye links? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I, I think we're, I think there's a lot of reasons, but number one, I think you've got the Whalen factor. 
Um, you know, this, this is a Lynx team that's probably as motivated as ever to like turn it on in playoff time. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, anytime you've got a, a championship caliber team with that, that sort of mentality, I mean, that they're competitors and between Maya Moore, Sylvia Fowles, I mean, you know, they're, they're kind of on a mission right now and, and not just in general when it, the lights come on in that playoff time, but, but also now you've got, this is their last go around together. Um, and I, I don't think you can really put into words exactly what that means um, and, and how, how do you exactly measure that for them? Um, but, you know, they've, they've gone to LA twice this year. They've lost both. Uh, second time was, was fairly easily 18 point loss. And so there's a little bit of revenge here too. Obviously we know it's going to be intense, but uh, I think, I think the links are going to bring it. I think, um, you know, the, the, I guess the team that I feel like would have to prove it the most would be LA, um, which is kind of a bold statement because I think they've, they've handled the links fairly well this year, but um, I'd be worried to match up with Minnesota and what they've got going on momentum wise, just from the Whalen factor um, and just a group of, of women who like have, have created a dynasty and, and not wanting that to come to a close. Well, and I'll, I'll add to that. I mean, I think it's pretty easy to say the links of the underdogs in this game, which is, which is wild. I think almost as wild to say that these two are facing off uh, in a do or die. It's just as wild in my mind that the links are by far the underdogs. Um, the keys for me are going to be, Bench play by the Lynx and Zandalassini. Can Zandalassini, well, it also is Brunson playing, but can can Zandalassini or Alexis Jones, somebody get some points off the bench? We've talked about this endlessly. The Lynx cannot survive with relying on Maya to have a 20-point game and Sylvia to have a 20-point game and then just like everyone else have five points. That that won't work. You need a little well, bit if, more. If we're talking about Zandalassini, I mean, look what she did the other night. Um, against the Mystics. I mean, she's she's arguably playing the best basketball of of this of really her young career so far. So if that is, is, is any indication as to what she's capable of doing, I would I would feel confident going in, you know, into to this matchup with her the way she's been playing. How do you feel, Pat? Well, I'll take the opposite approach. Here. I'll bounce out. I'm I'm uh, I, I you know I think I mean I, you make a good very good point, Rachel, which I do agree with you with is I think the links are coming into this game. With house money, which is crazy to think. I mean, I think they're coming in here with. I don't think they have a lot of pressure because I think they know that. I think there's part of them while they know that that they are motivated to, you know, give Lindsey Whalen a good send off. I think there's also part of them that knows that they are just not the same team that they were last year or the year before. That this is a team that they're older. Um, I think they're more realistic. I think they realize, you know, what this just. You know, I think I think you could tell that from last from Sunday night against Washington that there was this feeling that you know this might be the last home game we play uh, here with her, um, and we might not be back here this season. They're just this feeling of like they seem to understand. You know what? We're not who we once were, um, but as you said, they can turn it on. But Pat, um, but Pat, yes, yes. don't don't you think? To me, I completely agree with you, and I think that's been the biggest undoing of the Lynx is them having that realization, them thinking, once that doubt seeps into your mind, and Rachel, you can talk about this from being a player, in my mind, when that doubt seeps into your mind, it starts to affect every action that you normally would do so naturally. And perfect example, Maya Moore, just based off of the past season, when she's not thinking and she's just getting the ball, doing her and shooting, it's money. When she's sitting there thinking and trying to force it, that's when I've noticed her struggling a lot. So, So Pat and Rachel, I'm curious your guys' take, um, you know, is that part of the undoing is that they've accepted it? I think that it's, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit, I think what it is, is there's a lot when you specifically, you mentioned Maya, there's a lot of pressure on her. I mean, offensively, they're two depend. They have two people they can, who can score for that team. Nobody else. I mean, consistently it's two people and they have no, they have nothing else consistently outside of them that can, they know that they can go and get a couple of, uh, you know, a bucket or two from, they know it's Maya. It's Sylvia, and after that, there's a lot of question marks. Like you said, is the bench going to play well? What are they going to get from Whalen? What is Simone going to? Is Brunson going to play? There's, and that's why I think what we've talked about is that I think, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of changes this season. I think there's going to be a lot of you will see a lot of alterations at roster, and they're going to need to you know re overhaul it so that they aren't dependent on two players necessarily. So I think what you're you're getting to is like yes, 
I think there is this kind of realization, but I think it's also too, is like, there's a lot of pressure on Maya that she has to kind of carry her and Sylvia are carrying the entire way of the team offensively because they're a great defensive team. I mean, they finished, I think, third in defense in the league this year or fourth. You know, they still were a really good defensive team, but they dropped to ninth or tenth offensively. So that's really where you've seen the drop off. And again, it coincides with it's two people carrying the load. Okay. I, Rachel, I talk hear to you. Me. Um, I certainly understand it. I I think a lot of people would have gotten that vibe as well as kind of like, man, have they just kind of kind of accepted that this is what it is? But then I step back and I realize we're talking about the Minnesota Lynx here. Um, we're talking about we're talking about Maya Moore here. Um, <laughs> if there's any player on the yeah. planet uh, who can handle a load um, in terms of pressure and rising to the occasion um, and, and at a level of greatness. Um, it's Maya Moore and it's Sylvia Fowles and, and, and it's these women who have proven it over and over and over. Um, and so for me, it's harder to sit here and just kind of, um, you know, shoo, shoo it away is not, 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 not that that's what you're doing, but just kind of make it like, well, let's just let it go. I guess we had our time and it's over. I don't think they're going to go down like that. You know, we're, we're talking about the Minnesota Lynx here and, yeah. and I think there's some of the um, most talented, most competitive um great players of all time um and and especially in this recent era and so i i would not yep. be surprised that you know they did enough this season to give themselves a chance in these playoffs i think there was maybe an unprecedented un, un subconscious thought of hey we do have to take care of our bodies hey we do have to manage um the 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 schedule of the grueling schedule of what is this 2018 season um but hey man like those lights are going on tomorrow night that ball is going up and it's playoff time um, and I, I would not be surprised if we see a run out of yep. them. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll put it out there. I, we got to move on. We, we've, we've kind of spent a lot of time on this game because I think it's just been so exciting. But real quick, Pat, five seconds on the clock. Who wins this game? I, not proudly, I will take the Sparks with no with very little confidence. Rachel, I'm talk going to me. with Minnesota on a last second shot by Maya Moore, 79 78. Ooh. Did wow. he even drop the points? It's funny. I was going to say uh Lindsay Whalen's going to get is going to hit a free throw to win the game. Right. Colin has go. go. <laughs> got a technical foul. Yeah, so, so, something like that. No, I I I truly believe and and like we said, I think it. I think it's partially. It's all the things we talked about. It's partially the underdog. It's partially them gelling and, and having that extra motivation for their their teammates' uh, last game and last time with the Lynx. Um, I just the Sparks. I mean, this is just going to be a great game, great rivalry. I, I I could talk about this for three hours because I and I'm, I'll change my mind five times in those three hours too. I convince myself other ways. Um, Dallas versus Mercury. Pat, I'll let you start off because. Uh, you've been covering the Mercury all season, and this one is not any easier than Sparks Links. So uh, I don't want to have to go first. You're up, Pat. <laughs> Put all the pressure on me. Uh, yeah. No, it's yeah. You're right. I mean, this is this is an intriguing matchup. You know, we have two um, two teams that have kind of had some. You know, they've kind of had a little bit of these roller coaster rides. You know, I mean, uh, you know, at one point Phoenix was 14 and five. They were looking at the the top seed in the in the before Seattle ran away and hit with the one seed. I mean, Phoenix was right there with them as with the best record in the league. Uh, then the Sancho little injury happened, and this team kind of fell apart until you know. Luckily, the schedule scheduling gods benefited them, and they ended the season with four straight wins at home. They got some momentum, and they're coming into the playoffs now, having playing better, and they seem to have regained a little bit of that mojo they had earlier in the season. Um, Dallas, I mean, we know the deal with Dallas. I mean, this was a team, they were 14 and nine. I mean, they were at one point looking like they were going to have, they were going to get a home playoff game in the, uh, they were going to get a buy. They were going to get a buy into the second round at least. Uh, and then, you know, the wheels came off, uh, Fred Williams and, you know, obviously the reports with him and Greg Bibb, we know what happened there. Then he got axed and, you know, but they were able to, when they had their backs against the wall, um, they found a way to win at home against Vegas to get that eighth and final playoff spot. Um, so we have two teams. It's very interesting. Um, Phoenix won the season series 2-1. Uh, the one time that Dallas beat Phoenix, they blew them out, and Diana Tarazi only played about five minutes. So I know it sounds very simple, but it might have just been the absence of Tarazi. 
might have been the difference in that game. Um, but Dallas just played well in that game. Uh, I think it's going to be really good. I think you're going to have it's. You got a great battle of the bigs down low between Brittany Griner and Liz Cambage, um, and obviously you can't forget about Skylar Diggins Smith. And then of course Phoenix, as I mentioned, Griner is just Griner and Taraz are just two thirds of that all star trio with Dewana Bonner. Uh, I think this is going to be a really fun game. It is obviously getting overshadowed by the colossal matchup that is in Los Angeles tomorrow night or on tonight if you're listening on Tuesday, um, but. You know, Dallas Phoenix is a great appetizer to the entree that we're getting at ten thirty on Tuesday. It's it's going to be insane, Rachel. You're the uh, the token Liz Cambage expert. So let's let's <laughs> let's chat about this a little bit because I'm sitting here and all right. Let, let's keep this in mind. It's a very likely scenario that Wednesday morning, Candace Parker. Well, all right, for sure. Some of these players are no longer going to be playing. Candace Parker, Maya Moore, Sylvia Fowles, uh, Neka Agumike, who might not even play Tuesday. Then you go to the other game, and you're talking about Brittany Griner, Dan Atrossi, Duana Bonner, and then Skylar Diggins-Smith or Liz Cambage. I, I I hate to do this, but I, talk, I mean, talk. I don't want to make you pick right now, but give me... Give me some insight of oh that gosh. matchup of the bigs I mean, going down low in uh, Phoenix tomorrow. Both of these games tomorrow, like, give me, like, I'm, like, having anxiety already. I can't even, like, fully grasp how, how great tomorrow night is going to be in terms of these matchups. And, uh, you know, obviously, Pat, you talked about, you know, the Sparks and, and Lynx later on. But this one, to me, is just, like, like – like mind blowing, uh, the matchup of it. I think the intensity of it, the storylines of it, you know, and then, you know, obviously Griner Cambage going at it down low just in itself is, um, just, just a matchup for, for the ages. And so this, this is a game that for me, it's like, obviously Dallas is limping into it and limping is like the nicest word you could possibly use for it. Um, uh, <laughs> Phoenix, you know, is is obviously had yeah. had in what I would say a, a very strong year. I think they're 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 playing really well right now. They're they're confident right now. They've got some momentum. So I think just from from that standpoint, you look at it like, well, they probably have the upper hand, especially with everything that's going on with Dallas right now. But it was interesting interesting to me, and I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent right now. Skylar Diggins Smith tweeted out last night, O and O, like record O and O. And I think this is a great mentality. A lot of coaches use this with their teams come playoff time, come conference time, things like that to kind of um, refocus and re-energize a team when, when things maybe have been dismayed or things have been kind of up in the, in the air. It's, it's like, all right, you know, tomorrow's a brand new day. It's a fresh slate. We made it to the playoffs. Here we are. We know what we're capable of. Let's go. So I think Dallas is going to come in to this game with kind of a um, – you know, a really optimistic mindset, obviously a very focused and determined mindset. They obviously are talented. We've, we have known that from day one, that this is one of the, the most, if not the most talented team in the league um, from a lot of different standpoints. The, the presence of Liz Cambage, I, I won't go on and on because I know people will get really sick of me <laughs> in general, but she's the most dominant force in the, w, in the WNBA right now. Skylar Diggins is Skylar Diggins. And so I think at any point, they're able to, to go on a tear and make a run. It's just they're a little bit of a loose cannon. So it, it's a complete unknown how they're going to perform. Um, lit- literally flip a coin. Uh, you just you just don't really know what what's going to happen. And, and this is uncharted territory for them, even making the playoffs. So um, that's just interesting in itself. And I think Mercury, I, I would say, in my, my predictions, just being a little bit premature, will we'll have the upper hand. They, they're, they're experienced. They've, they've been in these scenarios before. They're, they're trending well right now. They're playing well right now. But this is a monster of a matchup. Like, like maybe a little bit for me more exciting than even the, the later game between the Lynx and the Sparks, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it, it might be, it's more exciting. I think this one has a more likely chance, in all honesty, to come down to the last second. Um, only because I – all right, guys, how freaking insane would it be if Tarasi goes vintage DT and nails, like, a couple threes to win the game because I could I, I, I agree with you 100 percent Rachel oh, so yeah. flip the coin my my gut tells me that there's something going on in Dallas they've somehow figured it out they've got the right motivations and they can you know turn that switch on and, and they like you said they know what their ceiling is and they can turn that on and do that and win this game but then my mind cannot forget the domination of the the big three in Phoenix so mm-hmm. I, I I don't even want to try and make a prediction. So 
So Matt, honestly, yeah. Here's the, here's the real question: How many technicals are there going to be in this game tomorrow? Well, that's the other. No, that's a great point. Is anybody going to get thrown out? <laughs> oh, it's going to get. Oh, it's going to get physical. Oh yes. I mean, between the, between Griner and Cambage, Tarazi, just Tarazi and Cambage, we could have three technicals right there. <laughs> I mean, and then you look at also too that you know you talk about like a more exciting game. I mean, it, here's to put a, to put it simply, if you want to put a number on it, the when the the when the betting lines and the odds came out for these two games, the line for the Sparks Lynx game was one fifty two. So that's what the line is. That's like a game that ends in like the seventies. You know, they're thinking like that. The the line for the the Mercury Wings game one seventy six. So high scoring, up and down, a lot of run and gun. It's two teams that play very frenetically. They like to score. A lot of threes from the Mercury. The Wings like to push it and drive. It's a it's a pace where it's going to be a lot of – it's going to be like watching a tennis match. A lot of back and forth we go. And I think that's what I think you're getting to is at the pace. Like the sparks Links game could be like watching like crab walking. You know, it, it could honestly get to that point just because it's a slower pace. But I mean, the the wings and the mercury. This can be like a track meet out there. Well, I'm I'm excited, and I I'm praying that no one fouls out or gets thrown out because I think if there's any two, if there's two teams that like you could very easily any day be like, yeah, their best players are going to get thrown out. Hundred percent is Dallas and the Mercury. So you know, I I'm I'm just excited to see if Dallas shows up defensively. I think that that's the key to the game. If Dallas is there defensively. We're going to see a game where they're going to push the ball, they're going to run it, and then if they can hold down defensively, they're going to win. Um, yes. I, all I right, I, I'll go first on the predictions of who wins this game. I'm, 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 I'm going with my gut. I'm going Dallas. Pat, you're next. All right. I will be the black sheep again. I will go with the Mercury. I think they're playing well. They seem to have found something. This big three, I mean, when they play well – We've talked about this. I mean, when they're playing well, they're really tough to beat. And if they can get off to a good start tomorrow night, I think that they're at home. I I go with Phoenix at home. Diana Tarazi, I don't like betting against her in elimination games. Uh, I'm going with Phoenix. Rachel? Man, this is tough. It's really tough. I'm having a hard time with this one, but I'm going to – I don't want to, uh, but I. But my gut is going to go with Mercury. I think Mer- Mercury is going to win it in, by six. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. They're going to cover. Very nice. Mm-hmm. The line is six right now. The, they're, they're favored by six, so they would cover. Very nice. Do you have money yeah, on that, this? No prediction. No, I don't I'm, – I'm not all into that. All right. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a great episode. This has been the WNBA Insider Show. We covered the first round of the playoffs, X's and O's, deep insight, and we're not afraid to speak our mind and give takes that probably are going to piss some people off.